Hey there, it's Gabe from Vitev. I'm actually out here in our warehouse today just because this was a place I could get away, get a little bit of quiet. Uh, it wasn't quite as noisy as the office. And, and we just got to a point today where we had to get uh, a video shot quickly, no, no fancy production or anything like that, just to answer a question uh, that continually comes up and uh, it's taking up a lot of our time and we know it takes up a lot of your time as well. So um, that, that question or that topic, if you will, is fluoride. Um, not should you or should you not drink fluoride. That's a whole nother subject. It's pretty uh, controversial, but there's also tons of data out there, lots of information you can look at and make a decision for yourself. We know that our uh, customers are very well researched. Uh, you all have opinions and you can figure out which way you like to go uh, for your situation and your family the best. But what we want to talk about is something that you were not going to find out there. Uh, it was not something that we even knew uh, six to nine months ago. We entered into this uh, market with the idea that we would have a pre-filter option, something that would uh, be kind of sleek and simple and mount on the back of the flow. We were calling it the backpack. Uh, we wanted to give people a choice. If you want fluoride, uh, you don't have to worry about it. You can keep it uh, the way it is. If you don't want fluoride, put the pre-filter on, pay a little bit extra for that, uh, but you have the option uh, and you're in control. And so we tested it uh, from a usability standpoint, functionality. It worked great. We were working with a company here in the States that's done a lot of inline filtration. They do a lot of the other media for some of the other products, uh, the filter products that we have, um, but they really specialize in inline stuff. Small, sleek, you know, high compactive, or uh, um, just a compact space to do a lot of, of really good filtration. And, and so we worked with them. They made a, a little backpack to fit on the back of the flow. We could put it inline for our under systems as well. All great, worked perfect, worked just like we wanted it to. And so we got to the end of that development process and we said, well, let's send one off to the lab now and see how it works. We wanted to get a finite window uh, of how long this would last before we needed to replace it to get back to your fluoride protection. And so we told them we were going to do that and uh, then this kind of whole Pandora's box opened up. Uh, we learned at that point that activated alumina, which is what the majority of filters are made out of that deal with fluoride, it's either that or bone char or bone charcoal as it's known, uh, but they're both prone to the same problem. They have to be used with an acidic water in order for that media to effectively get rid of the fluoride. Let me say that again. So your source water, what comes out of your tap that you're going to filter, has to be acidic for that filter to work effectively. Once you get above neutral or at least 7.5, it might as well not even have a filter. And uh, that kind of blew us away because you don't see that anywhere. And we went and checked other sources. We talked to some other filter companies and everybody verified, yeah, that's true. Uh, you'll see either below the video or we'll put it on the website, uh, the documents that we looked at from Water Quality Association, NSF, um, even the guy that patented activated alumina as a filter removal media, and I think it was 1936, I think it was, right there in his patent or in the paperwork it says, the water must be between 5 and 6.5 pH. The problem with that is nobody's tap water, nobody's water that you're going to filter is at that pH. It's all typically 7 and above, and sometimes even closer to 8 has to be that way. Your city water has to be maintained at that level because if not, it'll, it'll corrode the pipes. And so they have to maintain that alkaline uh, or slight alkaline level. So that kind of presented a problem. We had a system that worked functionally but didn't filter fluoride. And uh, it took us all the way back to where we started. Uh, kind of one of our core principles of, of Vitev was that we're not going to create a product, we're not going to market a product that does something or that we say that it does something that it doesn't do. And that backpack would have fit in that situation. Um, so kind of frustrating. Basically what that means is that most of the filters you see on the market that talk about fluoride removal have to be used in an alkaline or an acidic source in order to be effective um, and, uh, and frustrating. Um, the good thing at it, we tr always try to find the good side of this, is that the filter company or the media company that we use opened up and told us that. They could have just as easily said, how many would you like? Uh, but they didn't. They said, don't use our product. It's not going to work for what you think it's going to do. That was great. Uh, it also reinforced the fact that we're correct with reverse osmosis. You have to have an RO system, reverse osmosis system, to effectively remove fluoride. It's the same thing that the EPA, the WQA, NSF, all those folks recommend when it comes to filtering fluoride out of your water. So, hence the need for the Ultra. Uh, once again, it, uh, it reinforces the fact that um, that system is, is our premier system. It's the one we recommend the most for those that uh, want to get rid of fluoride. And uh, it's the one I use in my home as well. So, uh, the bottom line uh, is that activated alumina not very effective with tap water, not very effective for what's going to be in your home, in your situation. You need to go with a reverse osmosis system. So, hope this helps. Uh, it does cause more questions, which I'm not going to cover now because the uh, video is already too long. 
uh, about why they say they remove it, how they remove it, what percentage they remove it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you still have those kind of questions, we can help you uh, at least kind of show you that uh, the direction to go take a look at and get some more information on it. Uh, feel free to give us a call, drop us an email, hit us on the live chat. Uh, and But most importantly, look at the documents that, that we're sourcing here for you as well. Don't just believe what we say. Look at actually what the documents say, and then you can make your decision as well, okay? So I hope this helps. Hopefully it saves some time for everybody involved, and I hope you have a great day.